There we go. Charles Spurgeon is quoted as saying, a time will come when instead of shepherds feeding the sheep, the church will have clowns entertaining the goats. Wow. And he died in 1892. And uh, <clears throat> believe it or not, I have seen the day when they had clowns on the platform to get the kids in on the buses. Somebody brought in an elephant, put an elephant on the stage, and it decided to relieve itself on the stage. Somebody said, well, that's what you get from taking an elephant into church. But I'm afraid that we are, we have arrived, brother. Ezra chapter 4 is a picture of the war against the work of God. Let joy and victory come, and you will find that the adversary is not too far away. Right. Amen. And let's turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, just a minute. And usually, the adversary isn't outside. But uh, they can be. I've had a little entanglement with that 16 in verse 9 he says where a great door and effectual is open unto me and there are many adversaries so whenever there's something to be done for God there's always somebody who's against it uh, the adversaries are not just against anyone uh, if you look here it says now the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin Remember, those were the two tribes that didn't go north. Those are the two tribes that stayed south. Jeroboam became their king. Rehoboam was in the north. And you remember, he split things up because he wouldn't uh, give in to how you treat people. And, of course, we know it was of the Lord that that happened, but it happened. Verse 2 says, we seek your God as you do. The world wants to appear like they want to help, but they really want to do it. All they want to do is hinder they are the adversaries. And if anybody knew, knew about that, it was Lester Roloff. Uh, the state came in and they wanted to help him and they wanted to do this and they wanted to do that, but it was under their rules and the regulations. And Lester said, we don't do things that way here. So he ended up going to jail and uh, they gave him a very hard time with his home. Verse 3 and 4 says, um, But Zerubbabel and Jeshua and the rest of the chiefs of the fathers of Israel said unto them, Ye have nothing to do with us to build a house unto our God, but we ourselves together will build unto the Lord our God as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, hath commanded us. And the people of the land weakened the hand of the people of Judah and troubled them in the building. So the world... When they can't get their way, they attempt to weaken your hand. They'll, they'll do something to... Um, we ran into a couple things here over the years in our building, but we got through it. But it's always somebody wanting you to do something that you can't do. Uh, when we built the tabernacle, of course, the word tabernacle. I mean, when you say tabernacle, they think building, great building, indoors, 300 seating and all that kind of stuff. So when we got ready to put in the bathrooms and do kind of stuff. Of course, you got to meet the handicap rules, which I wasn't against, but sometimes they're overt. And so um, 
the local building inspector told me what I had to do was call the state building inspector. So I said, okay. So I called the state building inspector many times before I finally got a hold of him. And he says, oh, this is local? I said, yeah. He said, well, that's not our jurisdiction. That's the local. So we just went ahead and built. Since they couldn't make their mind up who was going to be in charge, you weren't going to stop me from getting done what I got to get done. So they'll, they'll try to stop you, stop you. And let's look over to 2 Corinthians just a minute, chapter 6. Of course, you, you're familiar with this, but just so we can see it. 14 says, 614, Be not in equally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness, and what concord hath Christ with Belial, and what part of he that believeth with an infidel, and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols. Just simple stuff here. The world has nothing to offer us. We can't get together and agree. But that's what they want you to do. And, of course, the agreement means that you agree with them. Oh, yeah. All right, verse 5. And they hired counselors. What they did is that's lawyers. And if there's anything that can drag things out and make it worse than what it is, it's a lawyer. And I know there's probably a good lawyer somewhere, but I haven't found him yet. All right? And I don't speak ill of the Christian Law Association. I'm just simply saying when it comes to lawyers. And the trouble of it is sometimes a lawyer has to tell you what he has to tell you because that's the law. So sometimes you've got to do what the law says. No matter what you say, brethren, we are controlled by the government. We, there's no way out of it. We're controlled by them. Uh, COVID-19 put that to test and as far as Michigan was concerned and Ohio and some other states we got by with flying colors but California that preacher out there got fined a thousand dollars a day for not shutting down his church I'll never know what the out, final outcome was but when the government makes rules you know what happened in Canada? Same thing happened in Canada. And Trudeau, is that his name? The, yeah. the uh, communist uh, ruler over there in Canada. Uh, they, they put people in jail. And when the people uprised and they didn't start anything, uh, no seditional acts, you know, January the 6th, uh, those people didn't do anything. They brought out the army. So just to let you know, the government is well and doing well. Uh, they've, they've locked all their garage doors now, so. <laughs> Do you know they found some more? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody must have slipped those under the door when it was locked. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if I didn't know the end was near, I wouldn't see it so funny, but. What's going to happen, just so you know, this is what's going to happen. It's finally going to be proven that Trump took him over there and <laughs> hit him. All right. <laughs> it was some he had left over from his raid that he... Trump did it. Yeah, Trump did it. Verse 8, and Rehum, the, the chance, chancellor in Shimshai... The scribe wrote a letter against Jerusalem. So letter writing, writing to the government, complaining about whatever's going on. Not anything new. It's as old as old, okay? You're just getting to see a good picture of it here. So a, a chancellor is a minister of the state like a judge. In other words, he's got the authority. Verse 13, be it known unto the king, that if this city be built and the walls are set up again, then they will not pay toll, tribute, and custom, and so they shall and damage the revenue, IRS, of the king. So you can see what it's all about. Pay toll, tribute. It's about money, revenue. 
back when, uh, 83, 84, when they were fighting for the right to have a Christian school, we went down to see our congressman, and what he told me was this. If you can find a way to get the money that we lose because the kids are in your school, if you can figure out a way for me to get the money, I'm all for you. In other words, he wasn't against the school. He was against the fact that 30 kids took away X amount of money from the public school. So it was about money. But, uh, Always has been, Don. You're right. And here's the problem, and and I and I see what they're saying. Okay, uh, years ago, one of the local supervisors came to me and he said, "What do you guys do with that property you got over there?" I said, "Well, we got a tabernacle on it. We have meetings on it, and we do church things on it. All of it." I said, "Well, obviously not. Some of it's swamp." And he said, "Oh, okay. Well." We may have to find some way to tax that part. I said, help yourself. You're not going to scare me by telling me you're going to tax the property. Do you understand what I'm saying? They, they're looking for some way to get the money because it's all about the money. Amen. Doc always said, if it doesn't make sense, there's a buck in it somewhere. And then verse 15, that search may be made in the books, the records of the fathers, so that, that thou find in the book of the records and know that this city is a rebellious city and hurtful unto kings and, and province, and that they have moved what? Sedition. What did Nancy say? Mm -hmm. See, if they can't get you legally, then they'll go after sedition. So I'd like to know what... I, and I want to write her a letter. I'd like to know what Nancy called 1776. What'd she call the fight against the British to have our freedom? What did she call that? Our fight to have freedom? Well, wasn't that sedition against the British government? Amen. She can't even face her own history and realize that she's a snake. So to be seditious means to have language or conduct directly against public order and tranquility of the state. So that's what they did, did they not? January the 6th, that's exactly what they did. They locked people up and there's still people locked up that had nothing to do with it. They were just in the wrong place or the right place at the wrong time or the right time, whichever you want to do there. Chapter 5, verse 3. At the same time came Tataniah, Tataniah, the governor of this, on this side of the river, and Shethar Bozni, and their companions, and said unto them, Who hath commanded you to build this built house and make up this wall? So the government never understands who gives the orders in the church. If you tell them, well, we're, we're building by what the Lord told us to do, where's he at? They don't understand that you can get orders from the Lord to do so. Because as being in charge, they only see one authority. And that's themselves. All we see is one authority, that's God. But they don't see that. And if you tell them the answer, they don't believe you. Verse 16, then came Sheth Bar. Bazar, Bazar, there we go. And laid the foundation of the house of God which in Jerusalem. And since that time, even until now, hath it been in building, and yet it is not finished. So he says until now. In other words, they're there building now up to that point. It still hadn't been finished. Uh, <clears throat> the Jews stated in John 20, verse 20, remember, that the temple was 46 years in building. So you know it wasn't this temple. So they're talking about a different temple. And uh, he wants to know, you know, how come it hasn't been finished? Chapter 6, verse 1. Then Darius the king made a decree, and search was made in the house of the rolls, where treasures were laid up in Babylon. And then verse 4 with three rows of great stone 
and a robe, new timber, and expenses were given out of the king's house. Excuse me? The expenses came from where? The king's house. Isn't that the government? People say, oh, those shouldn't be a state. The government and the state shouldn't be. It is in the Bible. I would rather have the state for the church than against the church. Amen? Amen. I'd rather, I'd rather be on the side of the state, be, be safe, than be fighting against them. I'm not suggesting that we join it. I'm simply saying I'd just rather be like that. I mean, after all, this is Babylon, and they're getting their funds from the state to do what they got to do. You'll find out Nehemiah don't like that at all. 6 9 says, And that which they have need of, both young bullocks and rams and lambs for the burnt offering of God of heaven, wheat, salt, wine, and oil, according to the appointment of the priest, which are at Jerusalem, let it be given them day by day without fail. And they made sacrifice of the sweet savors of God in the heaven and prayed for the life of the king and of his sons. So again, here's a government situation. And I don't see anywhere the Lord saying that they shouldn't have done that. It, I don't mind the state doing it as long as they're not telling me how I got to preach and what I've got to preach. What book I have to use. See, the, the problem is, is that in this situation, the state wasn't telling them what to do. They were just helping them out. Verse 12 says, In the God that has such caused his name to dwell there, destroyed all the kings and people, and shall put to their hand to the altar and to destroy this house of God, which is at Jerusalem. I, Dyrus, have made a decree. Let it be done with speed. So maybe that's where we had the saying come from, speed, some thing, speed things up or something like that. Verse 14, The elders of the Jews built and prospered through the Prophesy, prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Ido, and they built and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel. So it wasn't the state. They finished it toward the commandment of the God of Israel. Okay. And according to the commandment of Cyrus and Darius and Artaxerxes, king of Persia. Chapter 7, verse 10. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of God and to do it and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. So I just want to notice three things that uh, Ezra did in his prayer life here. He sought the law, that is, he studied it. And then to do it, that is, he practiced what he had learned. And then to teach it, in this case, to Israelites. So... Our ministry is trying to get other people to understand what we're doing and helping them by praying for them, by teaching them, by showing them an example in our life how we live so that they believe what we're saying. There's more to this here than when they look up the history of Israel, sure, it was a rebellious nation. Why? Because it was a nation protecting itself. You could say it about Israel today, they're a rebellious nation. Yeah, they're protecting themselves. How come America isn't a rebellious nation? How come they don't say it about Cuba? Understand that the government picks who they want to slice. All right, verse 21. All the letters of our alphabet are in this verse except Z. Say what's important about that? Not a thing. I just want you to... See, that's a trivia, trivia note, all right? It's just nice once more to say, not a thing. And verse 22, another trivia information. That, was, that silver was worth about $9,600,000. Uh, $9, and a bath isn't what you take. A bath is about eight gallons. Trivia. 
Does what? Jezreel's in there. Yeah, it has a C. Oh, wait a minute. That should have been a J. I'm sorry. Don't blame the computer. I'm not blaming the computer. I'm blaming the little letter I wrote in there. <laughs> Back when I had good eyesight, brother. <laughs> Back when I didn't make magnifying glass to see what that was. I should have looked the second time. All right, I'll change that. Yeah. <laughs> Sunday school class is up this way, folks. Hi. Good morning. Just come in and sit down. Help yourself. Okay. We're just finishing up our Sunday school class, so glad you, glad you came. Thank you. Yes, it's the first time here. All right. Verse 23, Ezra 7, verse 23. Whatsoever is commanded by God of heaven, let it be done diligently for the house of God of heaven. For why should there be wrath against the realm of the king and his sons? So the king recognizes the power of their God, and he no doubt had heard what had happened to them, how God had brought them throughout the land, and so he wanted to let you know. So verse 24, uh, just simply this, is one reason why churches are, were probably don't pay taxes and why pastors, if they want to, can exempt themselves from Social Security. All right, chapter 8, verse 18. And he says, By the hand, good hand of our God upon us, they brought us a man of understanding of the sons of Malai, the sons of Levi, the sons of Israel, and Sherebiah, and his sons, and his brethren, 18. Just simple here. Uh, see how important understanding is. Look at Proverbs 3 a minute. How important is understanding? Proverbs 8, verse 18. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and under and righteousness. <clears throat> I think I got, oh, Proverbs 3. Okay, I'm sorry. Proverbs 3, 19. I was going to say that. It's not reading right. He said, The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. You did get that part, right? Mm -hmm. By understanding hath he established the heavens. The Lord had to have understanding. Now you got to understand, he's not talking about the Lord looks at something and goes, I don't understand that. All right. It's just saying the Lord by, did what he did by understanding. Understanding that you need this, you don't need that, whatever it is. The Lord does it because he understands. Amen. You and I do things sometimes we don't understand when we get done with it. Amen. Oh, that's what they meant. Amen. There's some other Proverbs, but we'll not take the time there. All right, 8. Back in Ezra chapter 8. And verse 29. Watch ye and keep them until you weigh them before the chief of the priests and the Levites and the chief of the fathers of Israel and Judah in the chambers of the house of the Lord. And uh, did I read the right verse? Oh, verse 28, not verse 29, verse 20. I got verse 28 or 9, but it's verse 28. And he said unto them, Ye are holy unto the Lord, the vessels are, also, are holy also. And I just want you to see that the vessels in the temple were holy, but not only that, so were the priests. And we're supposed to be holy. Be ye holy as I am holy, we're supposed to be holy. Chapter 9, verse 1. And when these things were done, the princes came to me, saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the lands. You know what's about to happen, right? Doing according to their abominations, even of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Amor Ammonites, Moabites, the Egyptians, and the uh, Amorites. If you go back, if you go back, Genesis, you can, and you can get these uh, 
nations, or I'm sorry, Deuteronomy 7, you get these seven nations again. So what did God want his people to do? He didn't want his people to mingle with these people. Why? Because of their, what they learn, what they do, okay? <clears throat> he said, for they have taken the daughters for themselves and their sons, so that the holy seed hath mingled itself with the people of those lands. Now, can I tell you that verse 22, or those two verses, I should say, that I just read to you, are not accepted in this world we live in. Amen. They're unacceptable. The word, the, the fact that you would tell people you don't want to mingle with those people, and it's, it's more than just mingling with them, because what happens when they get friendly with them, then next thing you know, they're marrying them. And that's what God didn't want. It wasn't anything about their color. wasn't anything about their nationality. It was all about their gods Amen. and what they did. And the Lord didn't want his people mixing themselves in with these tribes of people. Amen. Now, if you get on TV and say it today, you'll be thrown off. Yeah. Probably be sued. So we're not to be a part of the world's system. Right. Separation is what the Lord wants. He said uh, in, in verse 4, and when I, when I heard this thing, listen, I rent my garment and my mantle and plucked off the hair of my head <laughs> and of my beard and set down a stonied. Now, believe me, I don't necessarily agree with some of that stuff, but I'm not going to. I've already got most of my hair pulled out in the front. <laughs> so I'm not about to sit down and pull my hair out. But I, when I read that, if I take it literal, I say to myself, that must have been an ouchie. You're pulling your hair out of your head and then you're pulling your hair out of your beard. But when he heard what the people had done, it, it bothered him so bad because why? Man, they had been told 2,000 years before, don't do it. But they're like Americans. We do what we want to do. Verse uh, 4, he says, <clears throat> oh, wait a minute, verse 5. And at the evening sacrifice, I rose up from my heaviness, and having rent my garment and my mantle, I fell upon my knees and spread out my hands to the Lord my God and said, O oh my God, I am ashamed and blush to lift up my face to thee, my God, for our iniquities are increased over our head and our trespasses growing up under the heavens. He's not happy with the report. When he found out what was going on, he wasn't happy. And if you get upset nowadays, people say, well, we have our right to do what we want to do. Maybe. Nine, eight. And now for a little space, great has been showed from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape and to give us a nail in his holy place that our God may lighten our eyes and give us a little reviving in our bondage. So if you compare that with Isaiah 22, 21 through 24, there's a, a hint, particularly in the end of the verse, to despair the desolate, repair, I'm sorry, the desolation thereof and give us a wall in Jerusalem, in Jude, in, or Judah and Jerusalem. So there's a second advent reference there, and you, you, I'm not going to take time to go through all of it. It's a number of scriptures, but I just wanted to throw it your way. Chapter 10, verse 1, And when Ezra prayed, when he had confessed, weeping and casting himself down. I can say one thing about Ezra. He's serious about his praying. Yeah. If you stop to think about your actions in prayer and compare to what his is, you realize we don't do much at all when we get ready to pray. Try to get in a comfortable position. He says... Uh, before the house of God, there assembled unto him out of Israel a very great congregation of men, women, and children, for the people wept very sore. Well, I guess it's time to get the church involved in. Now the preacher's upset over what's going on, and he's pulled his hair out of his head. Now he's got the people upset at what's going on. <clears throat> uh, we've already looked at that. Here's what you need to do. 
when it comes to praying. First, admit you sin. Amen. Second, confess that sin. Amen. Don't find a reason to try to get around it. Amen. And do something about it. Yep. If it's something you need to quit, if it's something you need to do, then do something about it. All right, chapter 10, verse 11. Now, therefore, make confession unto the Lord our God, our fathers, in his pleasure, and separate yourself from the people of the land and from the strange wives. <laughs> no comment. Then all the congregation answered and said with a loud voice, As thou hast said, so must we do. Now, again, this is not something that will be accepted on the, in America. Lord said, uh, separate yourself from the people of the land and from the strange wives. So these people had married wives. In some cases, later on, you'll see they had children. Chapter, uh, verse 19, I'm sorry. And they gave their hand that they would put away their wives and being guilty. I wonder why you never hear a sermon on that verse. And being guilty, they offered a ram of the flock for their trespass. I just want you to understand they considered it a trespass and an offering had to be made for what they had done. When, when, when have you ever given up anything for the Lord? Probably haven't. So the book of Nehemiah is next on the charts. And his name means Jehovah hath consulted. The author of the book, obviously, is Nehemiah. 13 chapters, 406 verses. And again, I didn't count the words, but they say there's 10,483 words. You say, what's important about that? Well, every word of God is pure, so i got to count them all. The theme of the book is the rebuilding of Jerusalem. However, in this case, Nehemiah seems to be given the, build, the job of rebuilding the wall. And when you stop to think about it, what's more important that the city be rebuilt or that there's protection to the city. So the thing would be was we build the wall, we protect the city, and then we can build the city. I don't know if that's the way they think, but the book of Nehemiah is a study on what happens when you try to do something for God. Come. What it amounts to is something similar to the book of Ezra. So Nehemiah 1, 6 says, let thy ear now be attentive and thine eyes open and thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant when I pray before thee now day and night for the children of Israel by servants and confess the sins of the children of Israel which we have sinned against thee. Both I and my father's house have sinned. So I said, the important thing here is notice that we have sinned, but more than we have sinned, he said, I have sinned. Now, I'm not going to turn there, but Daniel prayed in Daniel 9, verse 4, when he said, we have sinned. So if there's something when we're praying, here's something that you might take in consideration. Praying for the country, your country's sinned. Your country's made up of a bunch of murderers. Uh, I heard the other day now the uh, abortion pill is going to be available at the drugstore. I'm telling you, buddy, we, we have gone way over our head. Chapter 2, verse 4. And the king said unto me, For what dost thou make requests? So I prayed to God of heaven. We call this an on-the-spot prayer. Paul called it instant in prayer. In other words, there should be no point in time in your life where you can't at least say, dear God, I need your help. Yeah. Okay. And if your life gets so bad that you can't pray instantly, get right. Amen. Verse 10. And when Sanballat, the Horonite, and Tobi Tobiah, the servant, the Ammonite, heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. 
So we're going to have about five or six of these things about the enemy. First of all, we'll see the grief of the enemy. You say, what do you mean the grief of the enemy? Well, that's what it said right there. Amen. Why were they grieved? Because somebody come along who had an interest in what would the people and took an interest and did something. And that grieved them. They had hoped that they'd do nothing. Yeah. What the world hopes is that the church will just be here. Amen. We'll just be a building in town. We won't make an effort to do anything. We won't try to evangelize. Why? Because that's not what they want. Amen. Yeah. So understand that we have enemies. Amen. And it grieves them when they see things happen. Yeah. They told me when I first came here, a guy said to me, he was, out, was standing right out, th out there, only that was... The wall was here. That wasn't there then. And he says, what are, you, what are you going to do? I said, we're going to build a church. Oh, you'll never build a church here. I said, no, I won't. But I said, the Lord will. Amen. So the enemy is grieved when you get something done. Amen. The enemy is grieved when you speak up. When we first got here, we were here probably about two years, maybe three and they had a big controversy in the public school for sex education, and they, they had a couple of books that they were going to show. And I, believe me, you did not want to see what was on those pages. Okay? What a child would do looking at that beyond me. So I went to the meeting. And when they asked if there's anybody who had anything to say, I stood up. And there were, some, there were some people there who claimed to be Christians anyways. And they were angry that I stood up and said anything. So the enemy is grieved when you want to take up the, the, the mantle, so to speak, and get the job done. Chapter 2, look at verse 19. But Sanballat, the Horonite, and Tobiah, the servant, the Ammonite, and Geshem, the Arabian. Now we got the Arabians in there heard it, and they laughed us to scorn and despised us and said, what is this thing you do, you rebel against the king? Yeah. <laughs> so you're against the government? If the government's not doing right, I am. Now, here's the laughter of the enemy. You first have the grief of the enemy. Now you have the laughter of the enemy. And um, I don't know, hon, probably our first four or five years probably, I suppose. We heard a lot of things via the gossip poll. And people would laughed. If some of you would have seen the building then, you would have laughed, <laughs> laughed too to think that anything could come from that when it was rotten in the bottom and it was falling in, the walls were falling in, in the basement. And we jacked her up and built new walls, didn't we, Don? You helped lay the brick, or the block, I should say. You all with me? Some of you are. Some of you are. What time is it? <laughs> Chapter 3, and look at verse 8. Next unto him repaired Azel, Uzel, the son of Har Harniah, of the goldsmith. Next unto him also repaired Hananiah, the son of one of the apothecaries. There's a word that you don't see anybody called as an apothecary in the Bible, but what you do in Exodus chapter 30 and 35 and 37, or no, I'm sorry, 30 and then 37, is you find where that was the job of the priest to mix those concoctions as an apothecary, but none of them are called such, but it was their job. And what an apothecary is, is a drugstore. Now, my wife gets to get some special medicine, and they have to make it. And she gets it made downstate. They're apothecaries, what they are. We call it a pharmacy. The original name was drug store. It's where you got your cocaine in your... Amen. <laughs> Amen. You, you can get your Coca-Cola with... A, Chapter 2, 
I'm sorry. Oh, in chapter 2, we saw the grief of the enemy. In chapter, verse 19 of the same chapter, we saw the laughter of the enemy. Now here in chapter 4, go with me. It says, it came to pass, verse 1, that Sanballat heard that we built the wall. He was wroth. And <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't care how mad they got. Why? They weren't with us. They were against us. So he said, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. So here we have the wrath of the enemy. We were told things that I'm sure were modified. I'm sure we didn't get told the whole thing. But we were told things, you know, you can't do this and you can't do that. I said, why can't we? Well, because you don't have this and you don't have that. I said, we don't have to have this or we don't have to have that. All that stuff was some way to try to stop us from doing what he's doing. Amen. See, well, you weren't here the first five years. And in those first five years, we, we went through a lot of anti. Nothing physical. Nobody went by and shook their fist at us while we was building, but they laughed at us. But then when we started to painting it and putting it up and started to expanding this side and that side and that side, they stopped laughing. And we laughed. <clears throat> I put on here, they were torqued, as they would say, the things were going well. So people get upset when things go well. When things go bad, they, oh, we're, we're sorry to hear about that. But as soon as things are going well, they're like, well, you just, you're, you're probably not doing it the way you should be. I said, what would that be? Chapter 4, verse 2, And he spake before his brethren and, and the army of the Sumerians said, What do these feeble Jews? So here's what they think. They think the church is made up of a bunch of feeble people. If you don't believe me, ask them who they think should go to church, women and children. Well, can I tell you something, just for the sake of the ladies? Do you know how this church started? Mm -hmm. It was about eight ladies that started this church, along with maybe one man. And those eight ladies gave of their tithes and offerings and helped the foundation of this building. So don't you talk to me about the ladies. Amen. I'll slap you sideways. Amen. And then I'll let somebody else do the other side. <laughs> <clears throat> now, I've had people say to me, say, well, it's just a bunch of women. I said, you know who built the church? You know who put the funds in here? You know when they showed up when it was 45 degrees in here and sat through an hour's worth of sermon? It was ladies that were old. So don't talk to me about the ladies. Amen. Besides that, I married one, so don't talk to me about that. <laughs> Verse 3, Now to buy the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. I saw a fox in town the other day, and he wasn't breaking down nothing except speed. See, that's what they do. They start saying things about you. Yep. Ah, they ain't going to get nothing done. You, you can push that over when they get done with it. Yep. Now, when we started, yes, there was a pushover. Uh, one of our big pushers was Brother Dan. He'd get a two before him. Boy, don't let Brother Dan give you two before. Of course, right now he's crippled. He probably couldn't do much, but he knocked a lot of wall, a lot of plaster, a lot of stuff out of here so we could... Amen. Uh, so here's verse 3. So this, this we have here is what, number 3 or 4, or I guess 3, the mocking of the enemy. Yes, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah, the mocking of the enemy. And look at here. Look at the prayer. Hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head and give them a, for a prey in the land of captivity. People say, well, you shouldn't pray bad things. Well, that's what he was doing. He said, the Lord, fix it. Let them get, be taken care of in their own country. Let them, let them be, let the enemy get them. Yeah. Verses four through six, prayer is what kept Nehemiah working and ignoring the enemy. Amen. Verse six says, so built we the wall. So brethren, here's what you got to do when you're trying to do something in your life and you're getting a lot of static. Don't back down. Just Amen. keep going. Amen. Get in a prayer mode. That'll help you get in the prayer mode. 
And here's number five, <clears throat> verse eight. And conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. So here's conflict with the enemy. They finally get involved in it uh, physically. And we never had any of that that I call any physical contact, which I'm glad we didn't. <laughs> we didn't need that. I did get threatened to get beat up a couple of times by a fellow who stopped in on Thursday night service, and he was tanked. And he tried to beat me up, and I never will forget. Uh, as he went out the door, Brother Basil Rowe was here then. But God bless his heart. Brother Basil was a Golden Glove boxer in the Navy, and he. He chased that fellow down the steps, and he kept saying, go ahead, just take one swing with me. That's all I need, just one swing. I said, Basil, don't hurt the guy. You'll sue us, okay? So don't do anything to him. He chased him down to the next row. <laughs> that physical contact I've had, but I haven't had any that was against the building so much. And verse 9 says, Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch over against that day. So he... He did two things, watch and pray. Amen. Okay, so the, the key to getting the job done is we made our prayer and set a watch. So take that and use it spiritually somehow in your life. way to get something done is pray about it and be watchful. Be careful what you say or don't say and who you say it to. Sometimes you think people might be your friend. They might not be your friend at all. Yep. And as soon as you said it, they pass on. Well, guess what they said? Yep. And they enlarge on what you said. Amen. Okay. 